everyone. Today I'm here with Philip, and we're going to do a lecture today about money. It's a great topic. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about money and what are you going to learn? You are going to learn many, many things. So when you think about money, we're going to go through an exercise here, and I'm going to go through a couple of pictures. Okay, this is a word association. So what I want you to do is write the first thing that comes to your mind when you see this picture. Go, write it down, you don't have to tell me. Just quickly, write the first thing that comes to your mind. First thing that comes to my mind? Yeah, go ahead, write it down. Pot of money. Okay, go ahead, you can write it down. Okay. Because we're gonna have to go back to these. Next one, first thing that comes to your mind. Quick, instinctual. Right now. Loss. Okay, write it down. Next, really quickly, what comes to your mind? What do you think? Okay. Next one. First thing, word association comes to your mind right now. What? Bank. Okay. And the last one here? Spend. Okay, we're going to go back. So, this one here, the very first one, what did you say for this? Pot of money. Okay. This one here, what did you say? Loss. Okay. What did you say for that one? Um, time and money. Okay. And this one here? Bank. Okay. And this one here? Spend. Okay. So of all the words you said, the only, the only word that had any connotation of negativity towards it was this picture here, the loss, okay. Which really was what, the arrow pointing down or yes. what made you yes, think that? Yes, it was, it was just an arrow pointing down. Because this wasn't. isn't a picture of the market, it's a no. picture of the world, yeah. Yes, okay. it's just a drop. But yes. the immediate thing that came to your head was loss, okay. Yes. Okay, that's fine. By the nature of direction. Yes. So the whole gist of what I'm going to talk about today is how pictures or images or words even, okay, come into our mind and affect our belief systems about money. Images that come to us, whether it's things we watch on television or words we read on print or things we see on the internet, or these, all these things affect and, and actually create and keep creating, it's not like it just happens once and it's done, continue to create our belief systems as they evolve over time in whatever direction those belief systems have to go. And today, like I said, we're talking about money, okay? So overall, it sounds like looking at those pictures, and I gave a couple different pictures there, I think it was pretty obvious that one, you know, with the arrow pointing down was something that would seem like it was negative. But for the most part, when I had the pictures about money, you didn't have any negative thoughts that came up with the with the bills or even yes. like you could have said for this one here actually before we go you could have said robbery well i could have done you, yeah you could have you didn't say that which no. was funny no. yeah so it was this was a good exercise in general then it seems like you have a pretty good attitude about money now we're going to do another exercise here what do you consider a lot of money now this you can answer you don't have to write it down i'm just asking you here be honest. In what I mean, context, you know. though? What do I consider? No, this money? isn't. Don't intellectualize it. A billion. Okay. A billion. Good answer. That's what I. Can I think most people would say that. Yes. Yes. And I would agree with you. Oh, very good. <laughs> that is the one thing that I would agree with you. <laughs> okay. Number two. How much time do you spend each day thinking about money? An interesting question. Oh. Quickly, 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 write what comes to your head. Don't overanalyze it. Don't Not long it. at all, really. Oh, you don't? Okay. No. Y you don't spend a lot of time no, thinking about I, money every day. Yes, you open your wallet. You look at the money you have in it. Mm -hmm. You might count the bills in it. Okay. So that when you step out the door, you know you have enough. Okay, cash so give me, a, give me less than an hour. Oh, yes. Less than an hour? Yes. Of the waking hours you have in a day. Yes. Less than an hour about money. Okay. Yes. I'm surprised because most people think about money more than that in a day. But that's fine. You're being honest. That's good. All right. Number three. Do you ever feel that money controls you? Depends how much you have. 
No, do you <laughs> yourself feel that money controls you? And we're just talking about right now. Right. Right now. Today, today's present is February 2017. Not in the past or anything. Right now. Yes. Where are you at with yes. things here? Yes, I think you it do does. You do feel like it does I, I do. a little bit. Yes, I yeah. do. Okay. All right. That's, it's good to be aware of it. Yes. Okay. So four, do you ever worry about money? And if so, how often? Not very often, no. Okay. All right. I consider money. But I, I mean worry. I mean worry, worry, you worry. Not worry. No. You sleep at night or anything like that. None no, of that. No, I won't say worry. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Do you feel behind the eight ball financially in your life at your current age? Which you don't have to tell me, but I'm just saying right now where you're at, again, February 2017, do you feel like you're behind the eight ball with where you would think you would want to be at this point in your life? In trading, yes. No, in, this is a general question. Yes. Because you could be doing other things besides trading. No. Okay. Okay. So, trading, yes. Overall, no. Correct. Okay. That's an honest answer. How much money do you want right now to feel financially secure for the next five years, or do you currently feel financially secure? Ooh, that's it. I'm not talking about for the rest of your life. I'm just no, saying for no, the no. next five years. Next five years. Yeah. Yeah, 10 million would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it, isn't it? <laughs> you would not feel financially secure if you had less than 10 million. No, no. If no. this is, I mean, no, go ahead, no, write it down. No. I just. If you said you had <laughs> half a million. Uh huh. Yes. If you had five hundred thousand. You would be financially secure, wouldn't you? You would feel because happy you would with that. Uh huh. That's what I would do. I okay. Would manage okay. That. So if you had a half a million dollars, you'd feel good. Yes. I feel secure. You'd say to yourself. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. So these are good things to be aware of. They are. All right. So all in all, it seems that of all these things. Let me go back to these other questions here. The only thing that really was a situation was sometimes a little bit in here with this and an hour a day. I actually think an hour a day is a lot to think about money. Mm. It is. Because like, for example, I'm just going to use my sister as an example. She's a teacher. She doesn't manage the finances of the household. Her husband pays all the bills. Yes. She may not even have any idea how much money actually they have in their joint checking account doesn't think about it at all. So I'm not saying you don't have to think about it. I'm saying, do you see how one person's thought process about money is completely different than somebody else's? And you don't have a family or a spouse, no. so, so it definitely, definitely is different if you're single versus if you have other people to be financially responsible for, yes. which I don't either. So, you know, it's, I, I'm aware of those dichotomies with people when I talk to them, when I teach them. Now let's look at the pie of life, okay, to see about money. You could make different sections for this. Family, career, friends, you know, money. Yes. Of the pie of life here, if one of these pie pieces right. was your finances or money, where, where, where if you had to pick a pie piece? You mean which this is already the biggest piece? No, which piece would it be of the pieces? For what? For money. If money was a piece, oh, financial see. security, money, financial security, money uh, was one of the pieces. Right. Um, How important of the pie pieces would you make it? That's a good question. Well, the first. Thing, There's no right or wrong answer. I'm the just first asking. Thing is yeah. Health, definitely. Okay, you have the health. The biggest. Piece. So this would be health. Yes, has to be. It's no good having a lot of money if you haven't got health. Okay, very good. Then. The second biggest is that one. happiness somewhere in there and whether you say you could be the happiness will be the second portion of this one here yes well that can encompass a lot it can because you can be happy money obviously can create happiness mm -hmm. but it can also revert the other way mm -hmm. so that's a problem what um this is funny. This is going a different direction. This is this is becoming an emotional pie piece. I didn't say about feelings, but it's funny you went that but way, which is very interesting. It is, isn't it? No, I wanted you to say career, family, friends, you know, 
Ooh. But it's interesting you answered this way. I'm going to let you go with it because you're the only person sitting here talking. But the audience probably thought something different, or, short, or some of them would have. I go with this. Go with this here. Now let's remember. What did you say for this? Health. Then you said, and you also said physical health. So let's just pinpoint that. You said you said physical health. health. Just encompasses. Yeah, but really that's what you were talking about. Yes. It's now got to be. this one here is yes. happiness. All right, let's go on. I'm going to take it. Now, what about these three here? But then. Give them pieces, yes. it's okay. Okay, you could say career. I mean, I just. Which one here? The largest. This one? Yes. And then what about these see, two? You could flip it and you could put the career instead of the happiness and then the happiness. So this because... is your career now? Yes, because one. one... Happiness means less yes. to you than your career now? No, because. I didn't I... tell you to change anything. No, I know you didn't. Okay. But I'm trying to evaluate it. And when you evaluate it, mm -hmm. if you're happy in your career, then. The other so you want to flip them. Place. You want to flip them. Okay, fine. This will be. This is going to be career. This right. is going to be happiness. What about these two? Um, good question. What options am I? You you don't have you you're making up the options. I know. That's what I'm telling <laughs> you. Free time. Free time. Is where here? Yes, I would say so. This is absolutely hilarious, by the way, and not at all, but there's a reason that I was starting this thing, but I, I think it's amazing. Time. Okay, this the is time. I'm doing this with every person that ever comes here that I ever teach from now on because I think it's absolutely hysterical and I don't even remember what you said. It is Anyways, hysterical. okay, you said what it did is, you say? Free but time. Time is it. <laughs> In fact, time could be I mean if I just sit back, I love I can it. Have this. Yeah, I'm not gonna disagree with you. Time can be the most important thing you have. Okay, in your life. so happiness, free time, career. Health. Health. Boom. You only got one more. <laughs> what more do I need? What more do I need? Um, it's very difficult to put a perspective on the last one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what have I got here? <laughs> you had health. <laughs> you you had a career. You had free time. Happiness. I've said money somewhere, haven't I? No, you didn't say money at all. You don't have to if you don't want to. If it's not part of the pie of life. <laughs> well, yeah, well, For is. you, I don't... <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? It's a big part. Money, so money is, is money that? No, money can't be the smallest. Now you're changing it. I am. It's a pity you can't write on there which one's which. I remember. I know. I know for the record. I just went over with it. Yes, but it's a question of how far, whether you want the small pie section to be money, or whether you would... Um, um, you see, time is important. Time is really You're not important. getting graded on this, by the oh. way. <laughs> this is, good, good. If there's, there's, I, can't, <laughs> I can't put anybody. This is... <laughs> what are you going to make that? Money? Or you want to make it something else? It and have no money and do it something different? I wouldn't want no money, but you, you, mm, it's a difficult one because money is important. Money's got to be large. Do you want to put free time here and money here? Yes. Okay, let's do exercise. it. Money, yes. make it green. That's very, very yes. easy to remember. Okay. Now we have them all down. So the bottom line is you almost forgot about money, which is funny because I told it you is. that the whole lecture was on this, not that you would have known that, and then I said pie of life. It's interesting. When I was wanting to do this exercise with you, my whole philosophy was, again, friends, family, career, health, you know, finances, which is five things. One, two, three, four, five. That's what I was thinking you would put in a box. And you made up other things, which, I, which is great. And many other people would probably make up their own things, too. You see, I, I think I would encompass the money into the other sections when I say it, rather than put it in a separate box. But mm -hmm. Career, money, success. finances, it's yes. the same thing. But career may career. not necessarily mean finances because there are many, many people that do careers they love, actually, that don't support them financially. Yes. And they may have a spouse that supports them or they may not have a career that supports them or, or meets their financial needs. So they're doing things to work themselves up in life. They're, they're on the road or whatever. Yeah. So then money is, is something else for them, whatever else they're doing. So it, it doesn't necessarily have to go. For many people, it's true that it is, if they have a career, a specific thing that they're doing, a professional job. But for not everyone, and we live in a, you know, we live in a very unique world right now where many people are doing things for money that is really not their career. They may be an artist, they love what they do, 
they're not getting paid enough money for it. It's not supporting them. They're doing something else. Could be trading, yes. could be working as a waitress or a bartender to financially support themselves so they can do their music or art. So we, you know, we live in a unique world right now. So this, this pie chart could be many different things for many different people, but it's very interesting that you came up with things that I didn't even, I didn't even think about. That's fine. The whole point of what I'm trying to get with this lecture today is about the idea that your belief systems about money, and obviously this guy here looks pretty happy, he's sitting on top of the world of his pile of money here, and you know, that affects what you do. It affects things that you do that you don't even realize it. Choices that you make whether you go out to dinner or whether you go buy a shirt at a store, whether you go to a certain store, whether you decide to risk a certain amount of money in a trade, uh, where you would want to go on vacation, whether you even take a vacation, uh, you know, whether you get up every single day and look at every penny in the, your bank account and you know, tally it up and total up, whether you even know how much money you have in the whole world right now, if you added up all your money, so you even know. Your belief systems about money affect how you think about things if you're really focused on money or you're not so much or if you're in the flow with it. You could be really focused on it in a negative way where you're struggling or you could be really focused on it in a positive way where you're moving ahead and it's become a forefront for you going back to the pie where it's getting to the forefront at that point in your life where you're giving it more weight because you're trying to move up in life. Getting back to what I was saying. If you feel that you are behind the eight ball. So you, you said you don't, you don't really. So for you, money is here, but it's, it's not even 50%. Now, I'm, because you're here alone tonight, I'm going to talk to you specifically about this. So it's very interesting. If I'm asking these questions and I'm talking to you, it's interesting that this is here. In your training, knowing that now, because we didn't talk about trading tonight, I want you to think about this for later on while you're here you just realize this that this that it's actually not a huge focus for you so I don't know why you're worried about holding these trades till whenever there's obviously many many more things you have in your life that are important it's not even 50% of the pie of your life so I don't know why you are concerning yourself with holding these trades as some bigger target because it's it's really not something that you think about and lose sleep about you're not worried about it it's not even 50% of your you said free time which one was free time I think was blue free time? No, blue was career. This is free time. Yeah. This was the free time one. Free time is bigger than money, and you have more free no, it's time not. No, it's not. training. Uh, well, free, you told me it was, oh, and your yes. health was the biggest. Right. So if you have a job where you don't have a lot of stress, and you only have to work for two, three hours a day or whatever, obviously low stress is good for your health, but free time, you've got lots of free time trading. Yes. Free time is bigger for you than money. So why you would be needing or wanting or caring that Netflix continued or Apple continued and you still made money of them, I don't know, because you just it pretty much a, told me. It is important. Money is important. Yeah, I know it's important. It's, it's really, part of the pie. Yes, maximizing the trade position you have. It's to not important to you. I don't see any of that here. It is important to you at all. Well, it is. No, we, you're talking in specifics. I'm talking in overall your life. It's not. So, therefore... Well, I have to read, I have to read just the pine. No, I'm asking you, and you're being very genuine with me here, not knowing where I'm going with this. I am. So, it's going to help you. Why? Because your belief systems creates your actions, which turns into your results. And if your belief system... Money is important. Okay. It is. It was part of the pie. It is. But it is a large section of being important. So that's what do you mean a large section? There's there. only five sections here. Your largest section health. is your health. One was health. This is your career. That's career. Right. We'll change career then to money because money basically is the career. No, you're not allowed to change it. It's too late. But it is. <laughs> no, it's too late. Career it's too late. I told you why. We did this exercise. It's gone. It's too late. Sorry, I can't change it. Career them. is trading. No, career is trading and you're doing but well. You're money. making money. Again, since you got off the plane of JFK. But that's money. Money is how much. The trading is money. The money is how much. The career itself is not just trading. It's what you're doing. It's something you enjoy and you like it. Yes. And you're not spending a lot of time doing it. Yes. And you're good at it. It's money. This is money. But if you're not making money, then there's no point in trading. 
I don't know if you're getting the point I'm trying to make here. So let's continue. Okay. Just follow with me here because you can't go back and change the pie. <laughs> it's already sliced and diced. Okay. 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 Your belief, follow me here. Uh, yeah. Your belief systems yeah. create what the outcome is in your life of your actions. So you make choices based on what? You make choices based on your belief systems. Okay. And I'm going to ask this question, but actually, you know, are your belief systems keeping you stuck for you? For you, I think they are, but they're not what I thought that they were when I thought you were going to come here. You are not allowing fear to hold you back in your belief systems to do something, which is take the trade or take the size or take the risk, okay? So your belief systems, that are there are belief systems holding you back from being more successful, but they're not what I thought, which is interesting. And maybe I don't know what they are, and maybe you need to think about them. But this is why we're doing this lecture here. So it's not what, what one would think is the obvious, I guess, which usually comes out to be the monetary risk for people. Yeah. And the reason I'm saying that is because the pie chart for you, money was not a huge part of it. If I asked that question to many, many people, if I polled people, a lot of people would say that red thing is the biggest part. I'm not saying that that's right, but I'm saying if I polled a lot of people, particularly traders, yes. that red part would have been career or it would have been money. It's not for you. So what does that tell me? That tells me you're actually a pretty balanced person. So therefore, I don't know why you're being so hard on yourself about trying to you know, squeeze every penny out of these trades like we talked about. Mm -hmm. yeah. But anyways, getting, let's talk about this guy here. The interesting thing is children, <clears throat> young people, uh, you know, live in a world that they're full of love and don't have a lot of fear, which is the amazing thing about kids. Again, I don't have any kids, but I observe children and I teach adults now. And my sister teaches children. And it's very interesting because children just do. They just be. They're just themselves. They're emotional. They're sad. They're happy. They're whatever. They'll trade. They'll press a button. They'll do whatever. You are a good example of someone that's constantly in your head. You're overanalyzing. You're intellectualizing it. You're thinking. Your brain is working, you know, 24-7. You're, you're, you're thinking. You're overthinking it to the point where you're not in the moment sometimes of actually just being with what you're doing, which is this job, this career, this thing where you can get up in the morning, do it, be done with it, go on with your day. Like you told me earlier today, you were, no, it was this morning it was. It wasn't earlier tonight. How you were sitting, sitting, sitting all weekend, just trying to think, how, you know, looking at charts and studying charts, and how can I, oh, I just, I don't even know what you said. I don't remember exactly what you said, but I'm thinking, why would you, in fact, you emailed me on Friday, give me homework. I'm like, it's the weekend, relax, have a good time. You know, a child would not think like that. They'd be like, oh, I made a thousand bucks, I'm done. I got out of the trade, it's the weekend. Monday, I'll, I'll go do whatever I have to do. Do, 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 do. Yes, it's to strive forward, though. The rather what? Than, rather than um, breaking off, it's the fact that you want to move forward. Mm-hmm. Right. This guy's moving forward. He gets up every day and he goes to work. Right. But when the work job is done, he doesn't carry it all day long. Yes, but what and we all do, weekend there's no time limit, isn't there? There's no time limit. What do you mean time so limit? You can decide for yourself when your day finishes. Your day is finished when you're out of the trade. Yes, but there's anal analytical work to do, isn't there? You can look at a trade, you can look at charts, yes. you can analyze things when the market is closed. Yes, you can. And there is that to do. But there is a point where you're overdoing it. You're, you got to get more in the flow. Okay, now this is you specifically, not everybody out there. But, I'm, but a lot of people that have been training for a long time are too in their head about it. You got to get more in the flow of life. Here, we got to go back to the pie chart. The flow of life here still is not career as the biggest piece. The flow of life, if you want to break it down, this was health. This was happiness. No, it was freedom. This was freedom. Time. This was health. Freedom of time. Health. Was this one happiness? Yeah. So... This was, no, this was money. This was career. This yes, is I, I plus. Okay. happiness, freedom of time, and health was a massive part of your pie. So I don't know why you but need... It is important, oh. isn't it? If you what have, is? If you have no health, mm -hmm. 
Like, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm, that, I'm not, you're not, you're, I don't, you're, everyone is 100% right in themselves when they do their own pie charts. But, uh -huh. but yes, mm -hmm. you need the money to be able to maintain your health. You've got that. That's part in here. You got it. I have. It's the blue section. Yes. Work with me here. You're missing the point. The point is. No, 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 no. Okay, you're not. So what's the point? Tell me. Please. <laughs> I'm not no. standing in way, Melissa. No. no I want to know that you're getting this. Yes. So what is it? What is it? Please continue. Okay. This person here is in the flow. So I want you to get in the flow, okay, of what you're doing because I don't, I don't think... What's in the flow of? In the flow of your life. Meaning that making money is just part of it. It's not something that is really controlling you. You told me that it's not. It's not a huge piece of the pie anyways. So why are you obsessing about it with your trading? Why are you letting that control your trading so much that it's preventing you from being more successful than you could be? It does, it does, no, it does, it does have, um, it does control what you do, definitely. You, you do think about it, you have to think about it. It does yeah. control what you do? Yes, it does, it does, yes, because obviously one, one makes the other. If you're, if you're making money, then you are feel freer to spend, don't you? Mm -hmm. So it has to. So what do you think is holding you back? from being more successful than you are right now. Why don't you have the half a million dollars that you need for the next five years to feel more financially secure? If you had to sum it up briefly, then why? Because I don't think you're someone that's obsessed with money. I didn't think that before we started the discussion. Yes. But in your trading, those behavior patterns come out. And I don't, I don't know why, because that's not really who you are. You mean behavior, you mean I want you to hold them longer, I want you yes. to get more out of them. Yes. Yes, I do. I do, because things happen in moves, don't they? You, you're not just happening in one day, you can go for several days. You're intellectualizing it. We're not looking at a chart. I don't even have a chart up. We're not right. talking about charts tonight. Okay. Well, you could say that about any chart. We talked about this last week. Yes. We could say every chart looks amazing, and every chart does that I call a trade-in. So, you know, you're intellectualizing it. I'm saying your behavior, I'm trying to figure out where it comes from because you behave as a person that is more obsessed with money that has a red piece of the pie of that chart, and you don't. So that's where I'm, like, where is the connection here. What it, there is a belief system that's in your mind, and I don't know what it is, and you don't have to tell us now anyways, that is creating the, that is the blockage for you. And it's not about being a piggy about money or being obsessive about it because you're, because you're not. We, you didn't even know where I was going with this when I was asking questions. The opposite of fear is love. So for many, many people, they are afraid of risking money. They're afraid of taking risk. You don't have that problem. But the opposite of fear is love. Many people ha have fears, but maybe it's not the fear of taking the risk. Maybe it's a fear of something else. I don't know. Very often, there is something that holds people back, but it may not be the fear of, of risking the money or losing, for example. Because you do take losses and you do get up and take trades. Maybe you don't bounce back as quickly as someone like me, but you still do faster than a lot of other people. Okay, and you still trade and you're still doing it. So think about this. You know, I don't know what it is that's going on in your mind. But for many, many people, they're afraid to do something. It could be the money risk. I don't think that's it for you. It could be something else. But when you think about it, the opposite of fear is love. So if you have a choice to do something opposite it, if you looked at every single solitary thing, that you were afraid of. Again, I don't think it's the risking the money for you, but I don't know what it is. You have to think about that. Whatever the thing is you're afraid of, look at the opposite thing of what it could be in a way of love. Many, many times we look at love and we think about romantic love or friendship love or family love or spousal love or love of our children. So we think about love in terms of connections to human beings, to people. But, and, and, but love itself is a risk when you think about that, when you're loving someone else. 
But the fact is that the love that people need when they're doing things like the pie chart in their life is they have to love themselves. They have to love themselves enough to acknowledge, first of all, that they have belief systems that are holding them back to achieve their goals in their life, and then being willing to move beyond them. So we often think of love in terms of other beings, but you really have to love yourself, and that is even really even a greater risk than loving somebody else. Because if you love someone else and you fall in love with them and you date them and they break up with you, we can blame that person. Oh, that person was a jerk, you know, or whatever you want to say, or they do something to hurt you. But when you, when you do something to hurt yourself, that is harder to forgive. And then it's even harder to love yourself. When you make a mistake trading or you have a big losing day or you do something you know you shouldn't have done in your trades, and it's hard then to forgive yourself and love yourself for that choice or that action than it is sometimes it's easier to forgive someone else for doing something or you can put the blame on that person. But when you hate yourself for something that you did and you're in that mode, fear, hate, whatever, anger, all of those things, when it's you alone, yourself, it is very hard then to move into that space of love, which is a space that you need to be in in order to create the life that you want whatever those pie pieces are. You want all the pieces to be good, you know, however you would divvy them up. So you just got to think, do you prefer fear or love? Obviously, the answer is easy. You prefer love. So how do we move ourselves from a space of fear of whatever those fears are? For you, I don't think it's risky money. It could be something else moving forward in your life in some other way. What if you did this thing and you were Mr. Perfect? Then what would you do? What, would be the, what else would you do with your life? You wouldn't be obsessed about this anymore. You wouldn't be intellectualizing it. You'd be more in the flow like the baby. You would, you would, have a, you would need another focus. What would it be? Maybe, maybe you don't have one. Maybe you, you have one and it's something you don't want to deal with. I have no idea. I'm just throwing things out there. I'm saying that the greatest risk is in loving ourselves enough to be everything that we can be. And this is very important, actually. The greatest risk is in loving ourselves to be everything that we can be. It is easy to love other people. It is easy to forgive other people. It's easy to be angry at other people and then turn right around and forgive them. I'm telling you, loving yourself is hard because you have to look at yourself objectively and be honest with yourself about things maybe that you know that you, you made a mistake. And then on top of that, you have to forgive yourself because you can't make the mistake and then hate yourself forever or you won't be able to move past it. And if you don't realize the mistake you made, you'll do it again. So the love that we have for ourselves is... is, is is extremely important and so we have to choose love we always have to choose love in our choices and we have to choose love over fear and if there's something that we're not doing in life or we're not where we want to be in life or if one of the pieces of the pie of the puzzle isn't 100 percent of whatever it is whether it's money or whether it was career or whatever the pieces were not totally happy Okay, not enough free time. If one of the pieces is not complete, they, it was in that picture, but maybe if there was some areas that weren't as colored out, you have to think, you have to go into that space of love and see am I, where am I not loving myself enough that I'm not achieving all that I could be with these different pieces of my life. It was the pie of life, really. It wasn't a pie of, a pie of trading. Oops. So anyways, 2017, and this is the gist of everything I'm talking about, is really a time to succeed, but the success doesn't always have to do with money, even though that was a lecture. It's, it's, a, it's about the belief systems. It's about the belief systems that we have about our own lives and the things that are holding us back, which very often, like I said, has to relate to either fear or love. It's the opposite spectrum of something, but it may not always be the thing that we think it is. And that's why you have to be aware of it. So I pointed out to you that money is, in fact, of the piece of the pie, not such a huge thing. It's important. Of course it's important because you have to be able to pay your bills. That's common sense. But I'm saying day to day, you don't obsess about it. You, you, it's more important for you to be happy and to have free time. So when you're up, money, you get out. And you be successful. And as time goes on, you will evolve like the baby. And the baby will just go in and poop. That baby will just take 5000 you know, shares of something and won't even think it's 5,000. Whereas right now you're like 5,000 shares. I can't take that right now. Do you know what I mean? You'll be more in the flow of that. You know what I'm saying? Yes. yes. I don't know. What's your thoughts about this? 
Yes, yes, interesting. Interesting perspective. Um, money's definitely a big section. I mean, I, I think when you looked at that pie chart, I think now I would definitely say that it would be, it wouldn't be the career, it would be the money, because the money to me is the career, the money is what we do as trading. Mm -hmm. So you would now make money here if I made you go no, back? Or? No, no, no. Health is definitely first and foremost. Okay, There's but no you still have the health. If you haven't got your health, okay. you might as well forget everything. Okay. So to me, it would be the money would be the second part of the trading because I class the money as the trading section, which is the blue. Okay. So that is number two. And then I class number three as, as time. What, what you, you already had this here. That was free time. Yes. Yeah. You said money was this one, career no, this one. No, it's definitely the money is the blue one because okay, I, money is I, the I'm blue one for you. Money with career, okay. Because that is it, trading. So it's all the same. So money, and career to you, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and then obviously the number one is the health, and number two is time. Number three is time. Um, happiness was one of these. And then the happiness will be the green one. And what are you going to do? You have a new one now. I know. <laughs> I don't know what that one is. You have a, you have a completely new one now. You have an open piece to the pie. I don't, I don't know, but that's the gist of it. Obviously. Okay. And so I don't know as far as... Well, later you can tell me what you want to put there in that one. But it still is the point, though, that 50% of your focus for the pie of your life is still not career money. And for a lot of people, it is. Yes. Okay. Yes, but obviously different people in different situations. If someone's right. got a family, they need to go out to work, so money is to bring it in. Yes. Well, someone could have a family, and their family could be this, and this could be that. Yes. The same as you. Yeah. Yes. Just because they have a family doesn't mean money is the most important thing. No. The point, though, I'm trying to make with this is that, you know, we, we, may, we may have a behavior pattern that we're doing that doesn't match up with really with really our belief systems or our life. Your belief system in life, again here, is not that you should be obsessed about money because that's really not how you feel. Your emotions are not that way. That's not the person that you are, okay? Yeah. So I don't know why when you sit down to trade, sometimes you, you make decisions based on that. Maybe it's something that you picked up from someone else or something else, or some something else that has nothing to do with trading or way before you met me. In what way? I knew, in what way? You picked it up, and it's going around in your mind, but you that's not really who picked, you are. Picked what up? Picked up the belief system to be obsessive where you have to get every penny out of a train. Not to every penny, I'm, but I'm... Where you're not satisfied, where you have to be perfect. That is a belief system that you had that is really not who you are. Yes. You picked it up from someone else. I'm, I'm looking or something at taking else. more out of time as opposed to you enter a trade and take it over several days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose it's just um, a different different method as opposed to day trading. But that's not how you really feel as a person. No, but it's important that you bring in the time that you spend doing what you do valuable. But you are. You're you're doing well here. You don't have to give me an answer. I'm just giving you this food for thought here. Right. Okay. There is not an exact amount that has to be in here. I'm saying if you tell me you want, you know, you want or need or to feel financially secure in the next five years, a half a million dollars. Right now, you don't have it. So I'm giving you something to think about here. What is the reason and why don't you have it and how are you going to get there? You're not going to get there if you don't change something that you're doing. You are, have a healthy attitude of, as a person, right. as a human being. You, you, would be, you would be an easier person to come here and for me to teach and say, you're making all these mistakes, you're not listening to anything I'm doing, you're, 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 you know, you're taking trades without the right entry, you're not putting in a stop. I mean, you're not doing any of those things. For you, it is, it is a belief system that is creating a behavioral pattern that you're doing with your trading that does not match up with who you really are. And it needs to start to do that so that you can be the person that you are, which is the person that has a half a million dollars and is very comfortable with life and does not obsess about money and doesn't let it control him. Until that matches, until your trading matches up with who you are, 
you're not gonna get the money that you want out of the market. See, when, when, I, when I decide to do things, like I, I don't have a lot of patience with trades, okay? So I know that about myself. Okay. So I understand myself, trades, okay? Yeah. I don't have a lot of patience. Yes. My, my person is that I don't. <laughs> I'm an impatient person too. Oh, yeah. So I match that up with myself. Right. So I'm telling you, you need to, this needs to mirror the image of who you are with your trading so that it can all start to gel. Because because this this baby here, where did he go? He's in a gel mode. That was the point about him. Not only is he not in fear, he's just living. Okay. So you can think about it if you want. I'm pointing it out. You know yourself pretty well. Maybe you don't know why you have these belief systems. It doesn't matter why you have them. I'm telling you you need to be aware of them now so that you can move forward and just let it go. I think it's something that you might have picked up from some other place that you learned or a book you read or something in life or I don't know because you didn't pick it up from me. I don't think so. Don't well, you have it and it's not who you really are. Right. So I think once you start to be who you really are, which is much more relaxed, when you train... So how do I get out of that situation? I'm trying to help you. That's why you're here for a right. month. Yeah. Right. But I'm also making you aware of it because you're an intellectual person like me. You like to know why or what or why am I, I do. doing this? I do. You know, why is this happening to me? I'm telling you it's happening to you because something in your belief systems is creating this behavioral pattern, but it's not really who you are. It's this other thing. So move away from that other thing. I don't know what created it. You can think about that on your own. But that is not you. Because you didn't know where I was going with this. No, I didn't. All right, so this was very good. Yes. Was this helpful? Yes, thank you. Interesting. <laughs> of course it's, it's interesting. It's helpful if, it, if, there's, if there's some change or if it points something out at the end of the day. At the moment... I'm not quite there. Well, I mean, I just put this all on you. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not there. I'm trying. I don't know what the problem is. But but it's all a process. It's not like you wake up in the morning, boom, you have a half yes. a million dollars tomorrow. No. Listen, the I, process is you. I put this in your head. Right. You're gonna think about it. You're gonna feel it. You're gonna go through it. It's gonna it's gonna come together. Maybe it won't in your mind. You know, work itself out in the time that you're here. Even though you're doing well trading, maybe this other stuff will work itself out six front months from now. I don't know. I've made you aware of it, okay? You are aware of it. And something here will gel for you whenever it gels. You know, again, this goes back by the thing you can't always... Time is something that it's very hard to predict. If I could predict that, you know, on February 23rd, you're going to realize all of this stuff and boom... It is a process. Right. Actually, it's a process kind of like, uh, I don't know if I can do it. It's a process even like, uh, love is a process. Many, many people don't immediately meet the person and fall, I'm not saying this never happens. I think that it is possible. I think love at first sight definitely mm -hmm. is possible. I've seen it. Yes. But I'm telling you that usually for the most part, and I'm generalizing here, people do not fall in love at first sight. I do know that it's possible, though, because I introduced two people that got married within less than six months, and they're both friends of mine. Right. And I, the night that I introduced them, I went home that night, and I said to my mother, Eamon's going to marry that girl. And everyone at the dinner table saw it. When other people see that, you, that two people are in love, it's real. And they, it was the night they met. That, I know, I saw it. I saw it in my live life. Okay. And I made it happen. I introduced them. The point is, it's rare. Most people will go through this process, and of the process is you live your life and you begin to love yourself over time. And as you become an adult, the benefit of not being the baby, and the benefit of being an adult is you recognize the importance of loving yourself. Because when you're a baby, everybody loves you. And everybody takes care of you. But when you're an adult, you have to take care of yourself. And part of taking care of yourself is not just the health, and not just the money, and not just the career, and not just having free time so you don't go insane. Taking care of yourself really is just loving yourself, okay? Loving yourself even when you screw up, which means forgiving yourself so you can move past it. And many, many people have trouble doing that, and they let things, and they hold on to stuff. And then they feel this anger for themselves, and they're in fear about moving forward in their life. Good lecture, though. Yes, thank you.